Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, hello, if you can see me behind this big box. Uh, many thanks for clicking on my video and choosing to watch uh, my content. So, as you can see today, I'm going to be starting my build of Revell's 172nd scale Type 9 C40 U-boat. And uh, at 172nd scale, it is a bit of a big kit. Uh, as we can see, it's a level uh, 4 kit. Uh, you may remember I've already done an inbox review of this, so I will be up there somewhere. You can see the link to it if you want, want to watch that and see what you get in the box. Um, this is the first time I'm going to be doing two builds at the same time. As you can remember from my, my previous video, I'm going to be showing the beginners how to get into modelling and we're using the uh, Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A starter kit for that. But for all you seasoned modellers or you've got a few bills under your belt and you want to go up to the next big thing, uh, well, this video is for you. Okay, so without further ado, I think we'll uh, disappear up into the uh, modelling room, come gaming room, come man cave, call it what you want, and we'll have a look at uh, what we'll have to start off with in the instructions. Okay, so like I said, yes, this is a 172nd scale kit, but it is huge. Um, I've just dry fitted on the stern part to uh, one of the halves of the hull. And for those of you who are interested and you may be thinking about getting this kit, this model comes out at around 42 and a half inches, which for all you uh, people who like doing it in metric is 108 centimetres or just over a metre. So it's a big, big kit. Uh, you're going to have to have room that way to fit it but so like I say with it being a submarine it's only going to be uh, what's that let's have a look it's about uh, ooh, let's have a look where's, where's my back there we go it's only going to be about 17 centimeters wide so you're looking what six inches is it something like that I don't even think it's six inches but there we go. So you're all right for the width. It's the length you've got to think about. Okay, so first things first, what I do advise is before you, you do start doing the model is to read through the instructions thoroughly. Make sure it, uh, you know your way around these instructions. Uh, it's a Revell kit, so they are usually fairly simple and well, well laid out in this new newer style that they do so um there shouldn't be any any problems there but so like i say there are things that you need to be aware of um the first one being on the very first section let's see if we can get that on section one we are having to drill out holes now i'm assuming these are for handrails to be attached to along the side of the u-boat it's telling you to use a 1.2 millimeter drill bit now this would make very very boring uh, television to watch so i've already done that so you go along these little if we can get that in there little holes already counter punched in for you you just put your drill bit in uh do a little modeling drill and drill those out very easy to do that 
Then on the stern part, there's a hole there. It's telling you to use a uh, two millimeter drill bit. Now, mine went up to 1.6, so I get the feeling I may be having to uh, get the craft knife in just to widen that, but we don't know. I don't know. We'll see as we get on in the build. Might be that it's big enough or might be a bit of a, a fat, but we'll see. Also, on the conning tower, there are two uh, holes to be drilled there and two there. Now you'll notice on the instructions, little number twos, they are actually printed on the inside of the pieces. Um, let's see if I can find them. I've got to get them out. That's professionalism for you, isn't it? There we go. So these are the pieces. And hopefully my camera is going to be picking this up. Um, see where these holes are and these little numbers where the number two is on the instructions. That's where you drill your hole. Now, why I said to look through, sorry about the creaky chair, uh, read through the instructions. What I did was as soon as I drilled all these holes, it said on section one, I had a look through to see if there are any other parts where they're going to need to be drilled because I thought do them now it's going to be less of a faff if all the parts are fitted together so make it easier and lo and behold yes there is right on the very last section on section 54 it's telling you to drill a 0.6 millimeter hole at a diagonal through the top the deck there and into that piece there. That is for the thread to go through. You tie it off. Uh, where is it? It's on there. You, you, you tie it off. There you go. <laughs> Make a knot and that holds that into place. However, 0.6 millimeter hole ain't all that big. So I'll, if you've got that on there, how the hell are you going to thread a, your cotton through the hole on the top and to get it coming out through that hole there. So I've already drilled it because it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have to go out and buy some because I've just checked and I haven't got any. I'm going to try and get some really thin fuse wire. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass it through that hole there and come out there. And I'm going to make a loop sort of like uh, you know the needle threaders that you can get helps you thread your needle so when it pass it through there make a loop with it and hopefully that when I put the thread through uh, after the, the build's finished I'll be able just to pull on that wire and pull the thread through hopefully uh, failing that I think it's just going to be a bit of super glue in that hole to hold it into place but I would advise drilling this hole before you do anything else because as soon as we've got it onto the U-boat and everything's painted you're gonna have a dickens of a time getting your hole through there and your little hole I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this through that face plate there which is where you tie your string off so that's what I would advise that's what I have done so that part, so that'd be section one, all made up. Right, moving on, looking at section two. And on this, let me just pop that there. We're doing the forward and the aft torpedo tubes. Now, as you can see from this letter C, all these are painted the same color, which means that what I would do, I'd do the sub-assembly of them both, then paint them. However, if you look at that there, C, which is, uh, if you bear with me, it's uh, Humbrel's, uh, Revel's way of doing it, which is a dark, uh, uh, tank grey. That is also the colour that you're going to be using along the bottom of the submarine anyway so it could be 
I don't mind come along to paint this because I'm going to be using rattle cans of this. I don't own a, an airbrush, so I'm going to be using rattle cans. That we might be able to uh, get at these with a rattle can. We'll be painting that bit. I don't know. What I'll do um, first is I'm going to make these two sub assemblies up. I'll let them dry overnight and then I will come and do a dry fit. We'll see how they fit in, see what you can see and what you can't see. And are we going to be able to get into that section there with the paint or not? So, uh, like I say, a bit of forward, forward planning before you put it all in. Of course, if we do find that we're going to be able to paint those at the same time as we do the hull, then we can move on to these sections here. Um, I think it's been, uh, I've had a few comments about how you'd like to see me build this kit and people have said the, the they'd rather just see uh, the end result of the sub subsection, the sub belt. You don't want to sit there through me speeding up at this angle that I've got. Uh, building up the parts because really you can't see. I think if you look back at my uh, Warhammer videos when I was making up the little figures, um, all you could see me was cutting out sprues and gluing together. And uh, I'm just assuming that you have got a few model builds under your belt before you do tackle this. So uh, do you know what it's like to glue two bits of, two bits of plastic together? So to make it a little, yeah, uh, less less lengthy, shall we say. Uh, what I'll do, I'm going to go away. I'm going to build up these two subsections, and then I will come back and show you what they look like when they're built up, and we can have a look at us dry fitting them into into place to see how we're going to go on with the painting. So, by the magic of television, you will be seeing that that, that section. In about a millisecond whereas it's probably going to take me a good couple of hours to get this done right so shazam and ta-da there we go that is subsection in part two done and the subsection in part three so this is the following day uh i did these yesterday give the glue plenty of time to set uh, what I have done as well I have done a dry fit to see how they do look in the front and to be totally honest with you I think you can get in there with both a spray uh, spray paint them obviously and with a brush so uh, I don't think we need to paint these before we glue them in of course as well you do have the option of putting these these two pieces in either side uh, you've got the option of having the two pe the torpedo uh, doors open or close I'm gonna have mine open because I want to see these torpedoes in there so that would mean gluing these parts when this is in the front of the uh, submarine into that bit there so it'd be pointless painting that bit anyway see because you're not going to see it so I'm going to glue them on and do them all at the same time with the old rattle can. Uh, what I did do as well, I went straight to uh, section 17 and made the stand. Now I don't understand why this wasn't the first thing they told you to make anyway, because of course it's not a flat bottom model. Uh, it's going to wobble and wobble and wobble about, so uh, you're really going to need something for it to stand on. I did the same thing when I did my uh, HMS Bounty build. I made the stand and more or less built the ship from the hull up um, with it on the stand. It was was a great help. So I would advise making the stand first. I wouldn't paint it because you are going to be running the risk of getting paint from that onto your stand or even a little blob of glue or something <clears throat> um, I'd wait till you more or less finish your model before you paint that uh, another th just a little thing as well that I've noticed as well on these sections here 
I don't know how well this is going to show up on my camera. But you've got these little pins just there and these little pins here. Now, I'm assuming they are for your uh, torpedo bow doors if you want them in the close position. So you've got something for them to be resting on. Uh, as I am not going to be having mine closing up my mine open and they those doors will lie flat to that uh, bow section there. I may, it doesn't tell you to do it in the instructions, but I may cut them off. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get this on camera. Uh, am I? Yeah. But if you look at the photo there on this model on the side, they've got their torpedo doors open and there are no little, little nubs there. So I think before I glue them in into the final position, I think I'm going to cut those off. Uh, I have, like I say, done a dry fit. I don't think they are majorly important um, to the fit, I think. But we'll see. We'll have a look how it goes. I may very well just glue it in and file them down a little bit. I don't know. So that's all those bits done. They're all dry. So the next part is going to be... I'll be doing section four and I'll be gluing section five together. Uh, section four and section six, sorry, <laughs> let me see that. So that's gluing the two stern halves together. This is uh, gluing torpedo tubes into the front and gluing the main halves together. I'm going to do those next and then uh, that will be the end of that video for today. So, uh, once again, in pure, pure magical form, I'm going to say Shazam. And we're back in the room. There we go. The miracle of television. Who'd known? Right, so, okay. So, like I said, on this part now, we're doing section four, which is putting the aft section halves together with the after torpedo tubes and like a bulkhead and in part six as well we're putting the main body together with the forward torpedo tubes uh, that part there is for the periscope and another little bulkhead just there that's had a little strengthener so let's have a look what we've got so as you can see looking like a stegosaurus at the minute we've got that all glued and clamped and taped. I just use normal pegs uh, for those of you that don't own modeling clamps. They're just as good as anything. So as we can see, there we go. And that will be put to dry. And of course, we've got the main part as well. Looking like a stegosaurus, all clamped and glued. Uh, what I did with both pieces, because they are large, um, I used the normal thick glue along the, along the edges, which are to be made together. That was more of a act like a, a tacky kind of glue for me. So I got, actually got them into place and then using the Tamiya Thin, just that one, I took each section at a time, so I glued that and then taped it before I moved on to this next section there, glue tape, uh, glued along that, that spine bit there, uh, used the, the pegs as clamps then along there, let's glue and tape, uh, it doesn't look too bad, <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to do a little, a little work on the seam line, but not too much, uh, filler, I think it's just like micro micro gaps here really there's no big horrible gaping gaps just might have to just fill them a little bit and send them back so I'll be getting the uh, the layout for that same again with this uh, glued along the edges there with all needed doing with the thick and then put the two halves together flipped it over and just did it a little bit there, it's my thin, worked across, across the back, sorry it's, I'm having to do this way because it's so long I haven't got the room, uh, along the back there, 
just glue in a little bit, then clamp in, bit more, clamp in, bit more, clamp in, all the way down to the front there, which you can't really see, which is glued and taped. Um, I've got it hanging over the edge because there is a little section there. Uh, there's two pieces on either side that do clip together that you have to glue so they're clamped in place there so they will now be left overnight also while we're sat doing nothing uh, I've done this part here part seven which I think might be some kind of sonar array I'm not too sure uh, might let me know in the comments if you know what it is uh, this is going to need uh, a little bit of filler in it it's not gone not gone together as well as I thought it was going to because I've not had really any problem with this kit so far but I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up oh, just a few seams there it's just a matter of running a bit of Tamiya uh, sorry Vallejo filler there that's the one of my choice now because it's so quick and easy to use and it's clean as well that'll fill that no problem at all around there so all that is now being set aside to let it dry thoroughly so next time when we come up we can move on to this next section here section eight where we'll be gluing the aft half onto the the on the onto the main body there that's going to have to be left taped and left to dry as well but uh, after we've done that we can have a look at uh, doing the periscope on part five and probably uh, probably do some of these other little greebly bits as well go on to the bottom so there we go that's the build we've started the build and uh, yeah that's it let's let's let it all dry let it all settle and then we can get on uh, and continue with the build and that's the end of today's video i hope you all enjoyed that one Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel, it'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell. Also, if you've got Facebook, you can follow me at Adrian Bauer Project. And if you've got a Twitter account, you can follow me at Project Bauer. So, with all that in mind, I'd like to thank you all again for watching. And it's to see you all again on the next episode of The Adrian Bauer Project. Thank you.